start okay uh, good afternoon this is hari babu from rttc hyderabad working as a jtr here so we will discuss something about the applied physics and the contents will be units and dimensions waves and acoustics ultrasonics lasers and its application brief introduction to the atomic structure okay the basic part the basic part of this units and dimensions the basic definition of the units a unit is a definite amount of physical quantity which is taken as a standard unit that should be reproducible and internationally accepted this is about the unit so we basically measure all the quantities with physical quantities the definition of that physical quantity is the quantity which in terms of laws of physics which are described and whose measurement is necessary for all physical quantities so the term measurement the term measurement means the comparison of any physical quantity with its standard unit this is the definition of measurement so in basically the units and dimensions we are deal with the three different types of units they are fundamental units supplementary units and derived units the basic fundamental units being the length mass time temperature electric current luminous intensity and amount of substance these are the basic fundamental units and if fundamental units which are used for measurements and the units for this type these units are for length it is meter for mass it is the standard unit is kilogram for time the standard unit is second temperature kelvin electric current it is ampere luminous intensity it is the candela and amount of a substance it is the mole the supplementary units there are two supplementary units there are radian and steradian radian is the unit of angular measure which is defined as a length of an arc in a length of an arc of a unit circle which is numerically equal to measurement in radians of a angle we can almost equate this one radian equal to 57.3 degree centigrade the second type of supplementary unit is the steradian it is defined as the angle subtended at the center of unit of a sphere by unit area on its surface this is about the second type that is the supplementary unit the third type being the derived units derived units i we know they are derived from the other units so there are lot of uh, systems for these units followed systems followed worldwide there are four types of systems that is the cgs system where the length is measured in centimeter mass is measured in grams and time in second the second type of unit it is the fps system where the length is measured in foot your mass in pound and time in second third type being the mks system that is the length is measured in meter weight in kilograms and time in second fourth one is the si system which is almost similar to the mks system which is followed in most of the countries next comes the dimensions each body is uh, supposed to have a particular dimension physically the definition of dimension is dimensions are of any physical quantities are those powers which are raised to the fundamental units to express this unit this is about the dimension there are different dimensional formulas derived by using different formulas using it by which we can specify the qualities of an physical unit and this is about the basics of the units and dimensions next comes the waves a wave can be described as a disturbance that travels through a medium transporting energy from one location to another without transporting the matter okay just now so the main topics which we are going to cover in this are first one 
three types of waves. The first one is a mechanical wave. Mechanical wave. A mechanical wave is just a disturbance that propagates through a medium. The medium may be anything. That is, may be air, water, or any other type of medium. The electromagnetic wave. It is simply a light of visible or invisible wavelength. As invisible wavelength. Oscillate. The third type, a matter wave. It is a term used to describe particles like electrons that display wave-like properties. The next type is the gravity wave. This gravity wave is a ripple in fabric of a specific space-time itself. The next comes the mechanical waves. There are three types of mechanical waves. That are the longitudinal. transverse and surface in a longitudinal wave the particles in a medium move parallel in the direction of the wave in a transverse wave the particles in a medium move perpendicular to the direction of the wave the surface wave is often combination of these two pictorially we will see in the coming slides this slide is showing the property of a longitudinal wave Now you can see the properties of a transverse wave. How they will be propagated. The next comes the surface surface wave. You can see by the diagram the surface waves in physics. It will be generated all around the surface of this surface as shown in the diagram. The breaking wave. The next type of wave is the breaking wave, which It is almost opposite to the previous types of waves. Now, the different characteristics of the waves. The first one being the amplitude. The amplitude is the maximum displacement of a particle or a medium from its equilibrium position. Next characteristic of a wave is the wavelength. It is the distance between two successive crests or troughs or the peak points. the third one being the time period the time taken time it takes actually <coughs> the time it takes consecutive for consecutive tracks to pass through a given point that is a reciprocal of frequency the frequency is the number of cycles passing by a given time passing through a point for a given time next the wave speed that is nothing but the velocity the velocity is the product of frequency and wavelength so you can see the pictorial representation of amplitude and wavelength in this slide in the next slide we can see the frequency and period explanation in pictorial format in this we can see the relation between in this slide we can see the relationship in between speed wavelength and frequency next comes the harmonic waves the different harmonic waves the basic definition of this harmonic waves is harmonic is a signal or a wave whose frequency is an integral multiple of frequency of some reference signal or wave in this figure as you are seeing all vibrate at a same frequency that is the example of harmonic waves this is a pictorial description of a harmonic wave this slide shows the description of a harmonic wave with a wave which is not harmonic it is a non harmonic wave 
as you can see on this slide the example of a non harmonic wave which is whose time period and amplitude varies they are not vibrating on a same wave. next comes the reflection of waves reflection occurs when the wave happens to when the wave happens to hit a object then the reflection occurs the transmission of waves the transmission as you know very well the word transmission means sending the information from one place to another that is the actual objective behind studying the different characteristics of the waves the next slide shows the example of how a wave is being transmitted from one place to other place how its frequency varies now the relationship in between amplitude and energy amplitude is directly proportional to the uh, energy of a particular wave is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude this is shown in this slide the formula based on this formula some of the questions are expected in the examination or some of the basic numericals are expected okay in the next slide we will be able to see the amplitudes of transmitted waves due to heavy or light disturbances as this slide shows the reflected wave before disturbance before disturbance and after disturbance next term what we deal is the refraction refraction is nothing but change in dimensions or change in direction of a particular wave whenever it gets transmitted through a particular medium now the pictorial description of this refraction refraction the example taken here is refraction of the ocean waves you can see the change in direction change in direction of the waves due to oceanic waves next term which is dealt here is the superposition that is basic definition of superposition is nothing but combination of two waves either it may increase the level of intensity of the signal or it may decrease the level of intensity there are different conditions how superposition is applied in different applications the interference next term is the interference this interference is nothing but the mixing of other signals along with the original waves original signal you can see this interference is of two types the constructive and destructive interference as shown in this slide where the uh, in the constructive interference the waves are in phase in the in other case it is exactly the opposite one to the con constructive interference that is the destructive interference next comes the diffraction in before going to diffraction just go through the first three lines when waves bounce off a barrier this is called reflection when waves bend to due to a change in medium this is refraction when waves change direction as they pass around a barrier or through a small opening this is called as diffraction normally while playing with the glass items we generally observe all these three types of phenomena i can show pictorially one of the example diagram for this diffraction as shown here we see a block which is obstructing the waves and then they are being transmitted through a slit next comes the next type of wave that are the standing waves generally we deal with standing waves through different harmonics first harmonic second harmonic third harmonic and different types of harmonics okay that can be best understood by holding two rope a uh, rope at two ends and pulling it and releasing it little bit little bit that in that way we can understand the standing waves and different harmonics next term is the resonance before going to resonance 
before going to resonance this is what is a natural frequency the objects that oscillate or vibrate or tend to do so are tend to do so at a particular frequency it is called as the natural frequency and the resonance term you can see in the last three lines if a periodic force like an occasional push matches the period of one of the masses as shown in the figure or technically we can say when two objects which is one type and other one is oscillating at the different frequencies when their frequencies match each other then it is called as a resonance a resonant frequency the basic example what we have studied in our school life whenever army are marching on a particular bridge they are asked to step down because the frequency of the flag march the footsteps will be coinciding with the frequency of the bridge ultimately the bridge may get damaged that's the reason why army people are asked to step down whenever they are passing through a bridge that is about the waves next comes the acoustics acoustic is a branch of science which deals with the sound the basic definition of this acoustics we can see a science that deals with the production control transmission reception and effect of the sound this is the basic definition of acoustics here the sound is reflected transmitted or absorbed by material it encounters so now the wave nature of the sound wave nature of the sound whichever we have studied in the previous slides the longitudinal nature transverse or so surface or whatever are different types of waves that properties will be studied in depth in this acoustics the soft surfaces the next paragraph uh, the next line soft surfaces such as textiles bad insulation tend to absorb sound waves preventing them from further motion the hard across hard surfaces such as ceramic tiles gypsum boards or wood tend to reflect tend to reflect sound waves causing echoes the echo echo is nothing but the reflected sound reflected sound wave caused due to the reflection of any such material the ceramic tile gypsum board or any other reverberation is the another term which is most important in study of acoustics reverberation is the term used to describe the sound waves that are reflected of the surfaces there is a little bit difference in between echo and reverberation echo is a resound reverberation it is only a, deals with the uh, reflected waves as shown in the third lines third paragraph dense massive material such as concrete or brick tend to transmit their sound waves through the materials this is a, uh, from the last line we can uh for you can compare it with the sound which we hear from our nearby rooms okay the next slide high frequency sound waves are not capable of being transmitted through massive or heavy material high frequency sound waves are not capable of being transmitted through massive or heavy materials this is one of the question which may be asked in true or false or some of the condition low frequency sound waves are transmitted through massive materials okay next the pictorial presentation of this whatever we have heard from this figure you can see the acoustics which are heard by different human beings next slide here you can see the animals which have varying hearing ranges the first lowest being the human brain human hearing range that is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz you can see elephant can almost hear equal to the elephant's audible range is almost equal to the human hearing whereas the cats hearing is almost double the human hearing that's the reason why there are some proverbs where people say you have a cat ears are a rat ears which is a 
a bubble whose sensitivity is more or whose audible range is more. Similarly, you can, from this slide you can see the different hearing levels of different animals. Next slide also, something similar to this one only. So, the explanation of all this, what you have seen in the previous slides, is given in the coming two slides. This speaks about the decibel levels for normal human being. It is 10 decibels for normal breathing, 20 whispering, 30 for soft whisper, 50 for rainfall. All such decibel levels are being described in the next two slides. The pictures which show the acoustic or anechoic chambers. From this picture we can note that these are the different examples of anechoic or no echoes or reverberation type of chambers. Now in this slide, the speeds, the velocity of sound and light are compared. Okay, the light almost its speed is 3 to 10 to the power 10 meters per second, whereas sound is 1130 feet per second at normal room temperature. The next slide, it shows the frequency, amplitude and wavelength of different different waves. The next one, how voice, voice or sound is being transmitted from one place to the other. That is through the amplitude modulation or frequency modulation. That explain, explanation is given in the next slide. The explanation for the previous diagram which shows the amplitude modulation and frequency modulation is being given in this Slide. A ampli AM means amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, where the amplitude of the carrier wave will be varied. Where the frequency are varied in case of amplitude, frequency will be varied in case of frequency modulation. Now you can see some there are some materials which totally do not allow the acoustics through them. Which do not allow the acoustics through them. These are the different materials which are utilized as anti-acoustic materials. You can see this is the common scene. The slide, the picture in this slide shows the common scenario in different offices where there should not be any reverberations or echoes. There are some absorbents which are shown in the previous slide. In the assembled format, this will be the basic example why this type of material are being utilized in office formats. In different music and drama theatre, with the acoustic concept is mostly utilized. These are the places where the acoustics are mostly utilized. Okay, regarding reverberations, there is some theory which is to be learned. Reverberation time refers to the amount of time required by the sound in a space to decay 60 dB or to the 1 millionth of the original power, which is the basic property of that reverberation. The reflection, different characteristics are some useful reflections which are utilized in our day to day life. Reflections are important part of acoustical design for musical performers. For effective musical acoustics, the reflections have to arrive within the correct time and form. If it is not there, the efficiency of such cases will be reduced. The acoustics 
which are to be taken into account while building all these type of structures the architectural acoustics sound isolation and testing impact isolation hvac heating ventilation air conditioning systems environmental community or noise assessment these are the different fields presented on this slide where acoustics are the properties of the acoustics are utilized the different figures the different identified figures this is one of the example where the acoustic stadia or a sound simulation will be done while taking the taking into account the different acoustic phenomena the next slide next picture on the next slide shows the example of different acoustic structures these are the different examples where acoustics are taken into consideration before constructing any such type of public place or a hall or something similar to the structures which are shown in these figures the next uh, block diagramic approach for constructing such type of site the drawings will be made and uh, all these characteristics which are present in this slide are taken into consideration for building a acoustic environment so next after the audible range we will move to the next type of waves that is the ultrasonic waves the frequency of this ultrasonic waves is higher than the audible range that is almost 50 kilohertz above the audible range these ultrasonics in most of the cases they are also referred to as supersonic waves and these ultrasonic waves find their applications in most of the cases due to their smaller wave lengths these ultrasonics these ultrasonic waves can be produced by two types of methods that is one is the magneto friction method second one is the piezo electric method in the magneto friction method a particular ferromagnetic material like nickel or iron are taken and they are compressed along the mechanical axis where when there will be a difference in the other axis which produces the ultrasonic waves in the piezo electric method some crystals crystals like rochel salt tourmaline are quartz are compressed along the electrical axis and correspondingly potential difference will be developed along its perpendicular axis that is the electrical axis these are the two ways how we can produce ultrasonic waves that is the magneto friction and piezo electric method the detection ultrasonics can be detected by four methods one is the piezo electric method second one is the kunz tube method third one is the sensitive flame method fourth one is the thermal detection method through these four methods we can detect the ultrasonics which are ultrasonics by using different four different types of techniques next the properties of ultrasonics these ultrasonics are highly energetic the speed of propagation depends on their frequency they show negligible diffraction due to smaller wavelengths the intense ultrasonic radiation has to be has a disruptive effect on liquids causing bubbles that is when you pass a ultrasonic wave into a liquid it causes bubbles when ultrasonic waves are propagated in liquid bath stationary wave pattern is formed due to the reflection of the wave wave form from one other one to other end we might have seen while working with the physics laboratory in class 11 or diploma or intermediate the while studying the doppler effect of stationary waves this concept was utilized next comes the applications of this ultrasonics they are utilized to detect flaws in metals detection of submarines icebergs and other objects present in the 
ocean that is deep deep objects present in the ocean are seas cleaning and clearing direction signaling soldering and metal cutting formation of alloys and ultrasonic mixing this also ultrasonics also find applications in medicine also next next part deals with the lasers the different light waves laser is one of the form of as you see from the figure the laser shows laser shows which are famous in most of the cities which are attracting lot of tourists these laser shows for example in most of the <coughs> tourist places are hyderabad lumbini park mysore vrindavan garden chapter 17 of chandigarh all these have laser shows regularly organized attracting different number of tourists so uh, the principal we will see the what are the basic basics of this lasers basic definition types of lasers what are its applications in our day to day life so the laser the basic scientific principle behind working of this laser was given by dr charles the full form of this laser light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation again i'll read out light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation this is going to be the principle of working of this laser the next slide the different types of lasers which are in operation presently the solid state lasers the liquid and dye lasers the gaseous lasers so someone may get the doubt uh, the semiconductor lasers are being skipped out no no this comes under the solid state devices the lasers under the solid state lasers come up are the semiconductor type most of them you can see the example as well as the pictorial depiction of this type of lasers the solid state laser the example is ruby laser the liquid and dye analyzers normally it is used for manufacturing mechanical parts next the gaseous laser that is the most common example is the helium neon laser now next we'll study about the applications of this lasers where these lasers are applied in most of the cases in science and technology the so lasers are in this this slide shows how lasers are helpful lasers are helpful in understanding and offering clarifications of many basic problems of science and technology with the help of helium ion laser provided that the velocity of light in can be measured in astronomy lasers are helping in extending the distance of the objects ascertaining the distance of the objects this slide shows the counting of atoms in a substance which has become possible due to laser or the daily use cds or dvds work with lasers the uh, diagram in the bottom portion of the slide shows basically these lasers are utilized to read the cds and dvds in medicine also lasers find most of the applications as you see on this slide lasers are used in endoscopy to detect ulcers in the intestine or used in uh, medicine to detect the flaws in the dental setup or used for bloodless surgeries bloodless surgeries with painless surgery in other words these are also used in medicine in different format you can see lasers are used extensively in the eye treatment particularly in reattaching and deattaching retina 
the liver and lung diseases can also be treated by laser drugs in industries in industries also lasers find a vast applications lasers are now used for cutting drilling welding of metals and other metals laser light is used to collect the information about the prefix prices of various products and in the shops and business establishments the barcode printed on the product this is for the industry for our department that is bsnl most of the bills are sent to the customers along with a barcode the barcode scanner the barcode scanner by using the barcode barcode scanner we can know their bills that is the laser finds its application in such cases also in defense defense people are uh, defense people also realize the services of lasers in detecting the distant objects lasers are used in space communication in radar and in satellites the applications of this radar and space satellites mostly are used by the defense establishments see the as you see shown in this this slide particular slide lasers are used in various guided missiles and also for detection of enemy targets there are different principles by which this application finds it Uh, finds it use next coming to the electromagnetic spectrum electromagnetic spectrum we are we have been speaking about the waves wavelengths amplitudes the different forms of uh, waves different disturbances caused in the waves that is refraction reflection diffraction and all this but where these are applicable these are applicable only to a particular set of frequencies this slide this electromagnetic spectrum shows the different wavelengths and the names of the different wavelengths as well as the frequencies as you can see from this slide the visible visible light the frequency wavelength of the visible light varies from 400 to 700 nanometer these are all the seven colors which form the spectrum of visible light the dip, in short we may call it as vgr vgr the different combination of colors violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red this is the available visible spectrum next the next important part of the applied physics that is the atom the smallest indivisible particle atom that is the smallest indivisible particle we will discuss something about the mass matter the structure of the atom the different theories proposed by different scientists in case in regards to this atom first the atom you can see the structure of the atom here and the definition matter is anything that takes up space and that has mass all the matter is made of atoms atoms are the building blocks of matter sort of the example our bricks how our construction is made by using the bricks the first atomic theory the first atomic theory was proposed by john dalton and he proposed that all matter is made up of atoms atoms of an element are identical each element has different atoms atoms can engage in a chemical reactions atom can neither be created nor be destroyed atoms are indivisible so this person was the first person mr john dalton to propose this atomic theory next as a human tendency another person has given the a better version of this atomic structure that is e rutherford rutherford suggested that has an atom has a positively charged central part which is called as nucleus electrons are distributed electrons are distributed around the nucleus mass of an atom is concentrated at the nucleus compared with total 
volume of the atom the volume of nucleus is bigger in the next slide the example of rutherford's example is similar something to our compared to our solar system the next person to give the atomic model is mr bohr neil bohr is uh, atomic model was also almost similar to rutherford's excepting some points electron orbit around the nucleus right like this was in support to the rutherford model in the next slide next slide shows how electrons revolve around the nucleus what are the contents of the nucleus the contents of the nucleus are nothing but electrons uh, nothing but neutrons and protons in the bohr's atomic model in the bohr's atomic model each orbit can hold a <coughs> we stated that each orbit can hold maximum number of electrons there are four types of shells k l m and n and the maximum number of electrons which can be held by these type of shells are 2 for k shell 8 for l m 18 n 32 these are the maximum number of electrons the pictorial description of this bohr's model you can see in the next slide which is being displayed the center Uh, atom has a central particle which is a combination of protons and neutrons which contains uh, nucleus contains protons and neutrons and electron revolves around this nucleus in orbits and the different energy levels the level close to the level close to the nucleus has got lesser energy and level close to the away from the nucleus has got higher energy and he neil bohr has postulated two statements the angular momentum is equal to uh, angular momentum and electronic emission and absorption he has given some points on this now the structure of the atom the center of the atom is called nucleus which contains neutrons and protons and it is positively charged the relative mass of this proton is one it has a positive charge it determines the atomic number it is found inside the nucleus next is the neutron a neutron has no charge it has relative mass of one it is also found in the nucleus the third type electron it is negatively charged it is found outside the nucleus as suggested by two of the atomic models that is suggested by rutherford and bohr then comes the atomic number mass number how to determine the number of neutrons from this slide you can see a helium a helium is being represented by its atomic number and mass number the difference in between mass number and atomic number gives us the number of neutrons or number of protons generally it is assumed that the number of neutrons and number of protons are almost equal the electronic configuration that is based on the pauli's exclusion principle is shown on this next slide is shown on the next slide where the different concepts of orbitals come the orbits are not always spherical in shape there are different types of orbitals sp df and pairing up of electrons takes place only when the degenerate orbitals are filled this is about the different concepts given by given for the atomic structure thank you and all the best for the examination Thank okay. you.